Hi everyone, Frank Spangler with Learning Media Skills and in today's lesson we're going to talk about tripods. Let's get started. Now, chances are you probably already have a tripod, but just in case uh, you still have not picked one up and you're just getting started in video, there are some things that uh, you should know about tripods, uh, especially if, when you're purchasing one for video. The first thing that I want to say <laughs> is when you're shopping for a tripod, don't cheap out. It's my policy <laughs> that uh, you should go green. In other words, don't buy something that within six months is going to end up in the landfill. I say, save the planet. Don't buy cheap tripods. If you are really getting in to photography, and especially video photography, you want a tripod that is A, going to protect your camera. It's a very expensive unit. You don't want it uh, tumbling down on the ground because one of your legs breaks, which I had happen to me once. Uh, B, you want one that's going to last. What's the point of spending $80 every six months for another tripod when if you just start with a good high quality tripod, it'll last you eight to ten years. I've been carrying this one around with me all over the world for the last seven years or so and it's just still working great. And uh, so uh, get one that is going to protect your equipment, one that's going to last. And when it comes to video photography especially, you need one that has a good high quality head on it, which is what we call a fluid head. So that when you pan, it's a nice smooth motion. You hardly notice that a pan is going on. And uh, you really need that for video photography. People who do get the, the really cheap tripods, which I did when I first started out because I was a student on a tight budget, I just needed something to hold up my camera, right? Uh, I found that the, uh, when I tried to do a pan, it would just jerk, 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 and I would end up with video that is unusable. So go ahead, save up your money, find some cash, and put down $400, $500, whatever you need to get a high quality tripod that is going to give you great results for the next eight to 10 years. Just watching some salmon run upstream here. It's a beautiful sight this time of year here in Canada. Now, if you are only going to use your camera for still photography, uh, you'll be shopping actually for a little dip different type of tripod or at least a tripod that has a different head on it. Tripods really come in three parts. The very top part is called the head which attaches to a inner pole and then you have your sticks. So what can happen is that when you go into your camera store you'll buy them separately. You'll buy the sticks and uh, perhaps the inner pole here and uh, get a, a head that is more designed for still photography. Uh, still photographers like to be able to have the ability to have their uh, head flip up this way so that they can take uh, vertical shots uh, on a tripod, not just the horizontal parts. Video heads don't do that. So if you're wanting to do both stills and video, you might need to have at least two heads with you, uh, one to allow you to do those vertical shots. Today we're talking mostly about tripods uh, th that we can use for video. That's what we have here is a tripod with a video head. Now you may have noticed when I flipped this camera off the tripod that I was able to do it very quickly. It's what we call a quick release head. And that's important. Make sure when you're shopping that the tripod that you uh, look for has the capability of a quick release. Because what can happen is I'm filming the nice beautiful creek here and all of a sudden I hear the salmon coming upstream. Well, I know that I might not be able to follow them uh, very well with the camera on the tripod. So I want the ability to 
switch from using a tripod to going handheld very quickly. I want to be able to do that quick release and get into the action and be able to follow that salmon upstream. So if you are working with this uh, same kind of tripod, the Manfrotto is the one that I have used all my life. Uh, beautiful quality construction from Italy. And uh, you might be wondering, if you picked one up like this, how does this plate work? Um, it'll probably come as a separate part in your package and you're wondering, well, how do I get this connected to the camera and onto the tripod? Well, um, it's fairly simple. There's uh, under every camera, there's a little screw that you can screw this into. There's one little trick to it that you need to be aware of, <clears throat> and that is that uh, when you're screwing it tight, just before it gets really tight, take a look at the bottom. I have to take my glasses off. Take a look at the bottom. You'll notice that there is a little arrow there that shows you the correct orientation of the plate. Otherwise, it's not going to fit on properly. Yeah, you'll end up having the camera looking at you. That's the only way it'll fit on. And uh, so make sure that the arrow, and it says lens underneath it, and the arrow points to the lens. And that's where it needs to be before you tighten it in good. Now, when we pop it in, <coughs> it's going to click into place and lock down when you turn the lever here. And once it's locked down and the lever is turned, it is down solid. I am perfectly comfortable walking through the field. Once it's locked down, walking through the field uh, with the camera dangling off the end of the tripod. And I'll hike through the woods and hike through the mountains with my camera like that and, and feel perfectly fine and comfortable knowing that it's not gonna fall off there. Another benefit of having a high quality tripod. Okay, so what else can I tell you about this tripod? We mentioned that it does come apart. And this makes it really handy uh, for transportation. I'll just pop this into my suitcase. Of course, the legs collapse right down. And so it makes a very small uh, unit to add to my suitcase. I used to carry the tripod with me on board the airplane. But uh, after 9-11, a lot of airlines didn't like uh, having this type of device on board. One time I was in Vietnam and uh, I had already checked in my suitcase. And then I remembered, oh, my tripod is not in the suitcase. And so I tried to carry it on board and the security man just would not let me on board with the tripod. I said, well, why, why not? Why? He said, well, it's too much like a weapon. You know, the, the video head here you could use to clobber somebody. And so you might find that it's better just to pop it into your suitcase and put it through checked luggage. Now, the next question that you might have is, when should I use a tripod and when should I go handheld? Well, my basic rule of thumb is that when you're filming something to get that wide establishing shot, and even some medium shots when you go in halfway uh, to get those beautiful landscape shots, uh, you're going to want to use a tripod. No one wants to watch a jiggly landscape shot. You want that to be perfectly s still and steady. I would say when you're uh, filming illustrative cover shots, you know, uh, you've just done an interview, people have talked about things around their yard, their, their house and that type of thing. Uh, and you're getting shots to illustrate what they've said, uh, if, it's a, if it's something that's not in motion, then I would recommend that you use a tripod. That's going to give you the best results when it comes time to the edit. You're not going to have to mess around with stabilizing filters and that type of thing. However, there are times when uh, there are action shots. Things are happening quickly. And if you're shooting something here and you see something over there and, and you're trying to get around and while well, you're too high and now you need to try and struggle to get it down in time, you're, you've lost the shot. And so there are times when it is just a whole lot better to go handheld. And with today's lenses that uh, have image stabilization and even some bodies, even the 90D has some image stabilization. I haven't had a chance to play with it to see if it, uh, you know, how it performs or if it competes with the image stabilization of the lens. I'm not sure about that. 
maybe some of you out there know that and can let us know whether the two can work together or if they compete against each other. But uh, it's a lot easier to go handheld these days than it used to be before image stabilization. And so I think maybe in our next lesson we'll uh, talk about going handheld and some of the tricks that you can do uh, when going handheld that you just can't do when the camera is on a tripod. You can kind of simulate some of that uh, slider shot uh, uh, when you're going handheld, which you just can't do <laughs> with a tripod unless you pick it up and, and move it along. So there are some advantages of going handheld as well. But my rule of thumb is if something is not moving, why not use the tripod? That way you're not going to have a chance of it being unsteady and make the shot almost unusable. So action shots, where especially when you're in the action, you're in the group of uh, children playing and uh, things are happening, they're moving around a lot, a lot better to go handheld. Now we're going to talk about this some more when we do the lesson on getting the best composition. But I'll just mention it briefly here, and that is when deciding what level your tripod is at, it's dependent on uh, what you're filming. Uh, if people are standing, then you need to be right up here so that your camera is as much to eye level as possible. Especially when you're doing interviews, if they're sitting down, then you need to bring it down. You never want a situation where you're doing an interview and your camera's like this, or you're in a classroom and your camera's like this, fully extended but having to point down to get the children. What you want to do is as much as possible bring the camera to eye level of your subject. Now, you might wonder, well, how far down can I go? Uh, we've got our legs completely collapsed and we're down pretty low for for most anything that you need to film it gets low enough but you know there might be a few situations where you do or you wish you could get a little bit lower and you might ask well is there any chance like you might be filming some flowers and you want to just be a little bit down you might be filming some babies that are crawling around on a mat and you just want to get down a little bit lower well, with the Manfrotto tripods, yes, it is possible. And here's how it works. And I'm sure that this is true for most other brand name tripods. There's some, probably some way to go lower. But here with the Manfrotto, you just put the leg in just a little bit and then pull down on this lever here. And then you can extend these legs out further. Just do that to all three. And there you have it. <laughs> it's down about as low as you would ever need to go. And then when you're finished getting your shot, what you need to do is bring it back and bring these legs right in until they click so that they will now be locked into their normal position. All right, well, I believe that that does it for our lesson on tripods. If you have a question that we didn't quite cover, uh, be sure and leave it in the comments below. And uh, if you haven't yet, I invite you to subscribe to our channel and uh, that way you'll be able to catch our next lesson on how to go handheld. This is Frank Spangler for Learning Media Skills. We'll see you down the road.